Hey, coaches, Joe Salas here. We've got a special treat for you today. We've got Coach Mike Hardrick from Oxford, Mississippi. He is a veteran uh, middle school coach and uh, actually grew up born and raised in God's country in North Carolina, but now he's out in Mississippi. And he is an expert air raid guy. But I, I think one of the, the, the really uh, intriguing parts is he was an old school Veer guy and then made that transition. So Mike, I'm gonna let you tell a little bit about yourself and then kind of talk about that transition and mindset from Veer to Air Raid. And then we'll, and, and after that, we'll get you to teach us the bubble. All right. Um, again, my name is Mike Hardwick and uh, I work at Oxford uh, Middle School in Oxford, Mississippi, where University of Mississippi is. I've been, uh, been here, in fact, I was a high school principal for 20 years before that and decided I wanted to uh, kind of end my career having fun where I started my career, which is in middle school, you know, working with middle school boys and doing middle school athletics. And that was in 2005. And um, we are a 6A school in the state of Mississippi, which is the largest classification, but we are the smallest school. I mean, we have 1300 students and we're playing, you know, stu schools that have over 3000. Um, when I came here, uh, two separate teams, seventh and eighth grade, but they have about 25 guys out there. And they just said, we need some numbers. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I was, oh, uh, uh, Veer, we ran, so we started doing the Veer stuff here. And you, you could just see, there was just not a lot of interest in football. Now, our school has 72 state championships. Um, we've won 20 in the last 10 years. And one, two years ago, we won nine. So that's our thing and, and maybe speak to other coaches we're competing against other sports and other sports that are pretty good uh and we had to capture we had to capture some kids to compete you know so here in oxford uh, i was making fun the other night if, if you know high school coach could make a good living going four and six five and five six and five because if the ball game didn't go well, coach, you didn't if you weren't doing good on friday night they just go down the road to the grove to the Ole miss game you know, and just start having a good time. So you can, you can make a good living doing that, and everybody was fine with that. But, you know, to get over the hump, we were going to have to change some things. And I actually met a guy who was teaching here whose son was playing football for Ole Miss, and he had been in the state championship game in Alabama eight times. <laughs> he knew some stuff, and he could coach. And uh, he knew Saban and all those guys, but he knew Mike Leach, and he had been running the air raid since mid nineties. And that's what he went to the state championship game in Alabama. So started hooking up with him and uh, got him to come coach. And he taught me, he taught me the air raid. And I was the same way when I went over to it'd be like sitting in, in your house right there at your dinner table. And he started drawing this stuff up. And I'm like, you expect me to teach this to seventh grade kids. I'm like, what, what happens if we can't do this? And this is all we do. We don't say, so where's our runs. And he said, Oh, you got about two runs. He said, that's about all you got. He said, we can put in a sweep and we can put in an inside read and, you know, we can put in a power if you want a power. We can, you know, we can, we, we can do something like that. And, of course, the jet sweep. I'm like, that's it. And, um, yeah, that was, that was uh, you know, my safety net uh, was, ta was taken away. But I realized that in our classification, we were going to have to change some things and it's, you know, really not the kids, you know, our kids, again, we're a university town. So our kids have come to school on Mondays talking about the plays at Ole Miss. And after a couple of years of us fiddling with the air raid, they come, they come, I will, I will come to your class on Monday morning and go, Hey coach, Ole Miss is doing our plays, you know, with the ball game on Saturday night. That sort of lets you know you're on the right spot because they're doing the stuff that they see on Saturday. That's, that's that's golden that's golden you know they go to monday night football i have i have kids text me on monday night football hey the patriots tom brady they're doing the you know they're doing the bubble or they're doing something they're doing our play they're doing our play coach how and, uh, long how long uh, did it take from day one of going air raid to where you guys started having some success with it well i mean we were lucky i mean the first year i mean we had success the first year uh, he gave me five plays to do. He gave me the quit. He gave me the quick game, and uh, and he gave me a couple of runs in the R, in, you know, in a flare. Which I'm I'm actually going to start talking about that today. That's where we're going to start talking about the bubble is the R flare, and uh, and then he said if you get good at that, then we're going to go, you know, the the uh, 
instead instead of day two install the bubble, it would be like a year two in, install. So on the second year, we really started learning how to read, you know, the one step drops and the you know the two defenders, and started learning how to pass it. And he was right. The first year, he wanted us to go fast in middle school, and, and that's my mentor from my head coach, which is our, our head coach is uh, Coach Cutcliffe's son, David Cutcliffe's son, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, and our mantra is, he wants me to go as fast as you can, as organized as you can. And you know what? You don't have to do it. As you know, you, you don't, if you can do that and line up and go fast, it doesn't really matter what you do. If you can do that good and go fast, middle school, I mean, middle school kids just can't line up, can't line up correctly after they get tired after a couple of plays. So you don't, awesome. you don't have to do a lot of sexy stuff, really. You can keep it simple. And that's what we did the first year. And that guy was wise. He said, I do your inside read, do your eyes sweep, and do a little doodad off the eyes sweep, and you do your couple of quick game routes, and that'll be enough. And so nobody's seen it before, but we spread everybody out, and we could go pretty quick. Again, we're in Oxford University town. We do have smart kids. They picked up on it. And so the first year, we didn't have to do a whole lot. We got a little confidence. And like you say, the coaches, we got some confidence, and then we learned a little bit more the second year. And then that second year, we figured out, hey, we could actually throw this a little bit. And so here we are. Awesome. Awesome. Well, my, my uh, train of thought, and I, I hear you say you're going to go F uh, swing first, but my, my train of thought was let's give, uh, let's give them some, some high percentage completion. I was thinking bubble because I know you're good at the bubble. And, uh, and just give them something, kind of a, a jumping off point. For, for middle school guys to start gaining that success or that confidence and success throwing the football. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Let me make sure you can, uh, will it let you share? It's, it says, uh, it says you, you disabled it. I just, I just turned it on. How about now? Oh, we're golden. There you go. All right, Coach, if this is all right, let's, let's start here. Something I made up. I got to, got to looking at your, I got to looking at your, air, your install the other day <laughs> uh, that you made a couple years ago. Can you see that? Yep. So, and I also uh, watched some stuff the other week that Lasker put up uh, on there uh, with Chris Napier. And he was, you know, he did he did a, a coaching thing, a two part thing, and he was talking to some other coaches. I think you might have been on there, uh, and and he did some stuff, you know, went over some wide receiver stuff, and then they just asked some questions. Mm -hmm. And I believe one of the questions in that video, a guy asking something to the effect was, "Coach, what was the most underutilized part of the air raid?" And he immediately said, "Anything horizontal around the line of scrimmage," and that got me to thinking. Because if being you, if you okay, you're you're the you're the head football coach in old school, and I'm the, I'm the middle school coach. He's gonna he's gonna you're gonna say, okay, make sure you teach the power, make sure you teach the sweep, you know, because and make sure you can stop it because that's what you know for until the Elway came along in youth football, the power and the sweep. You got you're gonna have a you know you're gonna put your best guy at tailback and you're gonna sweep him or quarterback sweep him because those are the best two athletes, so. You know, you can pull guards, you can block down and you know, pull the GT guard, both guards, you can student body. I mean, however you're going to do it or all those ways. But before the air raid, that's what you were going to do in middle school and youth. Am I, am I correct? Absolutely. Air raid comes along and we start doing it a little different way and some of all the sexy stuff. And Coach, Coach Napier was right. You start to forget what's hard to cover and cover defensively because you kind of run out of guys. You know, when you start getting the outside linebackers and corners, those are going to be some of, you know, if, if, if they were your best players, they'd be in the box, correct? In yep. middle school. Little bits, little bits out there. <laughs> so, so you start thinking of, so that got me to thinking of the air, the horizontal. And he said, he said in Mike Leach's offense, he said, there are, we call it, we don't call him the F, we call him the R, you know, he said, usually their, their R is the, their second leading receiver, and he has 80 to 100 catches. Well, over, what, 12 games, that's what, six, games, six catches a game? And so, um, anyway, 
So I've kind of divided that down to our horizontal run, our, our run concepts, you know, and those are our plays down there. And that's kind of how we teach it. Those are our concepts. If anybody's interested, you know, we got the, you know, our runs, which is the R sweep. See, I call the R, R flare a run. This is, it's a run for us. I sell our kids. And I think that's how, you know, a, a coach doing this for the first time, it's a run that completion percentage has to be like a run. I don't even think about that that's not gonna be not completed. We're gonna complete that pass and we're gonna drill it. You know, instead of me pitching it to you, I'm just gonna throw it, I'm just gonna throw it to you. And there's a couple of things I think we do on that that I, 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 that I think we do a little different. I'm not saying they're better, but we do a little different. It works for us and that leads into the bubble, get, bubble concepts and also our slant, you know, our speed out concepts because well, sometimes they're hard to throw, as you alluded to at JV in, in freshman and in youth levels. And then our bubble concepts, we have some combo bubble concepts, and then you know a, a quick game, which our, our, our is flaring, and then screen game, which is just you know way down the road when we could get all that other stuff. So that's all the ways that we stretch you horizontal. And so, is that good? You want to see that or talk about that? Or is that good? That's perfect. Keep going. That's that's awesome. Okay. So we're going to go to Just Play, and I'm going to show you our first day for us, one of our first day installs. Uh, we're going to teach you the R sweep, the R flare, and we're going to teach you the all stop for the uh, – that's the basis of our quick game, and I went over the all stop, you know, the other night on the Lasker thing. So R flare. No, man, this is so easy. Coaches are going to laugh at me. That's it. And that's how we start. Before we teach the bubble, we teach this. And, we've, and so in pre preparation for this, I went back over our seventh grade last year in seven games. We, we threw this 33 times. So that's about five times a game, just this one play. And we completed it 30 out of 33 times. So again, this is a, this is what this is what yeah. If you're if you are my boss and you're got I want to I want to throw it, but I want you, I want a high percentage, you know, play in there that you can you know you can complete, you can get confidence, you can teach your kids, your kids can do, and that you know you can run pretty much against any defense in any any game, you know this is that's one of the things that I want Mike you to do. This is it. So this is how I run it. Um, now, I've run blocked this. This is, uh, you know, your sweep blocking, your run blocking. You can block this however you want to. You can, we, pat, we block it three ways. We block it like this, we pass block it, and we aggressive pass block it. Yeah, I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on that because, you, you know, you can figure that out yourself. You can. When you're, no when you're run blocking it, is it, are you trying to outside zone that guy or are you just basically base blocking? This is our, yeah, yes, sir, Coach. This is our basic outside zone block. Okay, outside zone. Okay. Well, I love it. So, again, I've got, I've got a bunch of plays here. So these are all, I thought you might be interested. These are all seventh grade plays. These are seventh graders. Okay, we're in doubles here. One of the things that I think we do, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get back out of this and go back to my diagram. One of the things that I think coaches get hung up in middle school, youth, JV, and that they can't complete this pass. Notice how we've got our R. Because I hear that all the time and I get questions. Are you going to bubble him or is he going to go forward to the landmarks? Is he going to you know, banana and turn? How are we going to do that? I think you have to determine how you're going to do that if you're going to run this play. The other thing that I think is key to this play is the quarterback technique. And I think that translates into what you wanted to talk about more, the bubble and the speed outs. Those, those, those basically, those throws in this, all this area, that's horizontal throws. Those are different than throws all down here, right? Right. The quarterback technique is different, and your feet have to be reset. So, if you noticed our R, what do you see about our R? Do you see any arc, any banana, anything? Uh, flat line. Our R is told 
on the snap of the ball, you're going to turn. You're going to turn facing the sideline, and that's what you're going to see in this clip. And I'm going to take three steps, and on my third step, I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to line to the – we have white face mask. So I'm going to say, find the quarterback's white face mask, and you run like a dog is biting you in the behind, and you run to that sideline as fast as you can. You know, we'll teach it by putting cones out here, and we say – your job is to get to the closest landmark. So right here, he's, he's basically on the hash, so his job is to get to the top of the numbers before the ball is thrown. And we'll put cones out here. And when we do this in our period every day, we'll do that a couple of times without, without even throwing it, you know, to get that technique, to get them with the idea of, you, you know, you turn around and haul your ass and go straight line as fast as you can to the sideline. The quarterback... Throwing to the right's a problem, is it not? Yeah. If, if you're going to throw any type of horizontal or a line of scrimmage, or you're going to throw out here and certainly out this way with a right-handed quarterback, it's a problem. You just can't say, okay, your R's going to go flat and I'll throw it to him. And I think that's what happens a lot of the time in youth and middle school. And I noticed on your bunch plays, see, I would have torn that up, that quarterback, if you noticed, Good, pretty good throws, but he didn't turn his, you know, that that's, you know, you're going to get some inaccurate throws. If we're throwing the R bubble to the right, and you'll notice in the clips, our, our, those are the two main coaching points because we don't spend a lot of time on the line blocking, again, because there's a couple ways to do that. To me, three ways. We're going to tell our quarterback to plant your, 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 your you're going to have to either go one, two, three, four, or take a hop, skip step, and you're going to have to transition and your back foot is going to be planted. Your toes are going to be pointing to the back goal post. I know it sounds crazy. Coach, sounds crazy. Color me crazy. All right. He's putting, his, he's putting his right foot toes all the way to the back goal post. Yep. Okay. All right, so that sets up. I know, Coach, I'm a little different. I'm, I'm crazy. So, two things. Watch the R. Watch him turn. He's going to plant his foot and turn, and you're going to see him. He's like he's turning towards the Z right here on, and, and watch him. And watch my quarterback. It's, you know, it's not, not, it's not great angle, but you're going to watch. You see his toes right there? Mm -hmm. You're going to see him turn. You're going to see him basically turn, turn in the air. And I tell the quarterback, so it's kind of like the bubbles. I don't care how you do it. I, I don't really care. You know, I quit trying to be so technical on that. I said, I just want your toes pointing, you know, the, the, the back goal to post. I don't care how you do it. You can do one, two, three, four, or you can just kind of, you know, you can just, you know, turn, turn in the air. I don't care how you do it. Just do it, you know. So here's the play. And we get a terrible block out here, but we get it out so fast. We get it out so fast, it turns into a big game. So here's the play. Here we go. So you, you saw what he did first. He turned and ran. He is just now turning. And see, do you see the quarterback's foot? Mm -hmm. He's planted. He's planted backwards. So that means his shoulders are square to this. I mean, he's square to this guy. You're not going to have him throwing across his body and maybe looping it, throwing it in the ground, throwing it in the air, throwing it behind him. He is pointing towards the quarterback. I mean, he's, he's pointing towards his target, just like you would coach him if he's, if he's throwing to this guy down here, you know. And we're getting out quick. It's a, we also are a third coaching point on this. This is a no-step throw. We call it a no-step throw. Bubbles, flares are no-step throws. We don't take a kick step. We don't read nothing. A no-step throw means you don't read nothing. You throw it. We call you, 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 you throwing it. Okay. So what he's doing here, since he's throwing it to the right, he's got to reset. His coaching point is his toes is pointing backwards and he's getting it out there. And there we go. And he's got it about at the landmark. We've told him, we want you catching the ball at the nearest landmark. The nearest landmark in the middle of the field is where the hash. Mm -hmm. We have a terrible block. Our wide receivers don't block air, but this is the other thing we've told our guys. If the corners, because this sets up something else later because he's flying up, but we tell the corners, you know, the, the, our offensive guys, if they're going to fly up like that and go straight to our – yeah, he may get you one time, but just think, if you go around him, if you can get past him because we're getting it to you quick, 
it's, you got you got 12 yards for anybody else going to touch you if he misses and that's what happens we're getting it to him quick and there he goes so we don't we do a lot of things incorrectly on that play but again the coaching point is watch the three steps in the back and watch how the quarterback resets and plants his back foot and for us that's that's what we teach our quarterbacks plant your back foot properly before you throw we work a lot of time on that and again I'm not trying to tell anybody that I have a, like I told last year, I have a bad habit of, you know, if you don't do it like we do it, it means you're not doing it right. I don't mean to come across like that. I'm just saying this works for us. This is how we teach it. And those are the coaching points that make this play for us. We completed this 30 out of 33 times. Can you, uh, can you take it back to the snap? I just want to see how the quarterback gets there real quick. I was watching a running back that first time. We, I'll demonstrate it. I'll demonstrate it by going one, two, three, four, or I'll say, if you want, if you want a hot step, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. But I want the toes pointing. Inside. So you know, so so, and we'll work on that. The you know, when we do our installs for the first week or two, you know, we'll we'll work on that. And they just they you know they find it how they want to do it. And we kind of teach the bubbles the same way. We'll get into that. I don't spend a lot of time on that unless they need help. I just kind of show them. I want, you know, I think some things you get almost too technical. Right. Well, that's perfect right there, Coach. All right. Uh, uh, this is another good play because we do some things wrong on this play here. These are seven graders again. Okay. This play is good because we do everything wrong on this play. You can see our, our running back. We've just made a log run, and you can see our running back. What's wrong with him? He's tired, ain't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's tired. Look at our right tackle. Oh, by the way, this is a girl. Our starting right tackle is a girl, and she's good. But she steps. She's, she's, she's messed up. She stepped with the wrong foot. You know, and he sees it, and he starts to peel off. So we do a lot of things wrong, but we get it out so quick that that's one of the other things. It's a high per percentage completion and we get it out quick. So you're letting theoretically one of your better players get it quick and see what he can do. Again, watch the court again, watch the quarterback. We're throwing it to the right. So watch what watch the quarterback because you, you're you're interested in that. And I'm and I am too. I, I watched these clips together uh, yesterday uh, Tuesday with the quarterback. Yeah, yesterday morning with our quarterback uh, and watching his feet. So here's the play. We do everything wrong, but but what we do good is we get it out quick. So here we go. We're on a straight line. We're on a straight line. The quarterback's almost too quick, isn't he, Coach, because he doesn't really reset. He almost sets and throws all at the same time. He's almost too quick, isn't he? I think it's perfect. <laughs> he can't be too quick on that deal. And you see our guard. I mean, our, our, you, she, she's messed up. She's she she stepped with the left foot. She is not reach blocking. She's messed up. And he sees it, doesn't he? He sees it. And of course, you're playing Oxford. And I've just told you we run this play five or six times every game, so everybody knows. Hey, Oxford's going to run the R flare. So he's coming out there, but we get it out there to the guy so quick. It's a touchdown. I mean, again. To me, in middle school, that's a no, the, coach. That's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, it 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 it's a no-brainer. Last clip of this, and we'll move on. Is uh, seven graders. These are my these are my scrabinis. The, these are these are completely different guys. Everybody here is new. It's a new new back. These are some of my scrubs. We're gonna run. We're gonna go to the right again. You notice how the quarterback there, he does it. He does, he does like a four-step, da 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 doesn't he? Mm -hmm. A quarterback goes flat. He doesn't turn, and he's not running really like we want him to go, but we're getting it out there so quick, and look at all that green grass. He makes, he makes one move, and he's, go, and he's gone. Nice. 
there if, if 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 that's if that's what you want if you want a high percentage play an easy play to teach uh, a good play that has percentage of working against any defense and just a couple of coaching points that any coach can teach and any any athlete can execute there's your play and that's why we start that at that play before we go to bubbles before we go to anything else you just helped a lot of people right there, Coach. That's Any that's one, uh, that's one everyone can put in, and and uh, looks like have instant success with it. I don't have much to tell you on the bubble screen. I do it like every coach in America. It's, again, it's not 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 sexy, and I didn't really. Again, you got your same choices on the line block, and this is what we call our key screen. You know, the inside receiver, like everybody else. We do it maybe a little different. Again, we don't have a concept side, and you're doing other things on this side, not in the not for the bubble game. We're doing it. We're doing it the same on both sides. Mm -hmm. The other thing, coach, I think is it might be important that on our quick game and the bubble games, when we're and you're talking about practicing and make it and making it a go-to play that's simple. So we're doing this the same thing on both sides. So we we practice this. We can practice this. You know. With, with two with two quarterbacks right, right. and two groups at the same time. So when we're repping this in five minutes, we can get a chameleon throws. Right. You know, to both sides doing the same thing. We can get better at this instead of having to do one group do the doubles, one group doing this thing, and then we got to swap it where your group's doing the doubles and your group doing whatever it is you decide them to do on this side. We're all – if we're calling – if we call the key slant, piano keys, we call the key slant, Everybody's doing it. Everybody knows what they're doing, and everybody's doing it. And the defense can't cheat because, you know, well, they're going to do it to one side and the other side, you know, they don't really care much about it or they're doing something else. We're doing it to both sides. And just the, the practice advantage is worth it. That's that's a problem a lot of middle school guys have is how do you practice it. Because because of the time. And that's why I mentioned that. Two quarterbacks and get both sides at the same time. The, the thing that is not really drawn properly here, we're not arcing. We're, we're teaching this again a little differently. We're teaching this just like we teach the art player. This, I've messed this up. This should be a solid line. Now, how we're, we're doing them the same thing. Our art flare, we're telling them to run straight as you can, stay even with the quarterback's face mask, and you keep running like a scalded dog until he throws it to you. We're telling our bubble guys the same way, and this is where I used to, where I messed up, and this might be of some value to again middle school coaches trying to teach it. I drove myself crazy till I finally said, "I don't care." How do you teach them to get with? You know, do you do the three steps laterally? Do you do the backwards pedal? I mean, you, you know. And I finally said, "I don't really care. I don't really care." I want, you know, I'm going to draw the cone of where I want you to get, which is going to be even with the quarterback. And when you get even with the quarterback, you are running straight as you can to the sideline. All right, your, your diagram disappeared. Did you take it off there? No, sir. You should, you should, you should still see it. I'm not, I'm not seeing you. I'm seeing your picture, but I'm not. There you go. All right. So, okay. Hold on. Let me see. All right, so we're good. Keep going. So, and I think that's the, and that's the thing on the bubbles is you have to decide how you're going to teach the bubble and how what's important to you. You know, you I think you can get yourself all messed up in how you teach them how to how to get width and how to get depth. And we finally said, I don't care. Don't really care. We just need you to get to this spot, wherever that spot is. And then once you get to that spot, you're going to run straight straight to the sideline. I mean, to me, those are simple coaching points. And I'm not saying that's the only way to do it, but instead of arcing and then, you know, get depth and arc and go towards the, you know, we don't do any of that. We just say get depth. And when you get and when you get even with the quarterback, just, just take off and run. Just take off and run as fast as you can. And our quarterback's doing the same thing. He's planting his foot. and He's throwing to the right. I want his feet, his foot planted. Go back, and I think that's the other thing you have to, you know, if you want accuracy in throwing those routes, I think those are the two things that make the bubble important. All right, I only got one. I only got one video on this, but this is a seventh grade, and this is out of trips. 
we do it like everybody else. You know, you're going to block the one man, the two man, and then, you know, the three man. Any of our receivers can get it. You know, the now screen that guy. You know, if we do one finger keys, the, in, the one receiver, the inside receiver is going to get it. If we do two, two receiver, two, two, two keys, piano keys, then the second receiver gets it. So the other two defenders, you know, other two receivers are blocking the one and the two defender. Backs at the three defender, like probably every coach in America, correct? Yes. You know, no, no, no. again, it's not sexy. That's not hard. That's sound. That's easy to teach. It's not, that's not hard. All right. Our inside receiver is going to get it. He's going to bubble, and then he's going to run straight down the 40-yard line because that's where the quarterback is. And the quarterback's doing the same thing that you saw before. You know, he's pretty good. That's, a, that, that's a, again, these are, these are seventh graders again. See, watch. So don't you love it? See, the quarterback did it again. He turned. He turned. He turned all the way around. He got his feet planted. He planted his back foot. His plant. His back foot was facing that way, and he's throwing it straight down the line. Our guy's going straight down the line. You know, I kind of like that. That's pretty good. Yes. The throw wasn't great. He had to wait on it, but there we go. So to me, again, the coaching points on that, I mean, we we look at it again if you want to, but the, the coaching points on the bubbles, it's kind of like the R flares. You, you've got to decide what your technique on the bubble is. I don't think it's good enough to go, okay, well, you're going to get some width. And when you kind of get even with the quarterback, you know, you're going to kind of arc it. I mean, you know, I think you've got to be a little bit more specific than that at youth, middle, even JV. I mean, I think you've got to decide how you want that to look. And then if you want it accurate, you've got to, you've got to decide what you want your quarterback mechanics. Cause if not, they'll be like the guy that was throwing the bunch. I'm not, I'm not making fun, but you know, that, the quarterback was basically just turning his shoulders. He wasn't moving his feet. Well, if you do that, you're not going to get an accurate throw every time. If, 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 and that's probably what you're going to tell me. If I work for you, you're going to go, Mike, on these R flares and these bubbles, I want this, I want this play. I want to, I want, I want this play completed. I want that pass completed. Whatever you got to do, I want that pass. I expect you to complete that pass, and I expect you to teach it that way. Correct? Yes. So those are our coaching points. Get even, go straight to the sideline, and the quarterback's going to have to reset themselves. And, again, this play is virtually completed every time. That's perfect, Coach. Coach, I'm glad we had you on here, man. This, this is what, you know, you kept saying it's too simple, but that, that's exactly what I wanted. I, I, I think you helped a lot of people today because they, they just need to see some simple things that they can get positive yards with. And your little coaching point on the quarterback and his toes, I'm going to steal that one myself. That's a, that's a great, uh, great coaching tip. And uh, got another one there or is that, is that here's, the now, here's the now screen we'll, we'll leave with that okay. yeah i mean I, I think i think on your horizontal things i think and even your speed outs you know which we talked about you know before we got on camera you know those those are routes that are that that are there you know in that area you know your horizontal routes but again those are kind of hard and those aren't really long throws but those are hard throws for quarterbacks if they if their technique in there, they're going to have to reset their feet. They're not throwing it, you know, inside this area here. You know, you're gonna you're gonna have to teach your quarterbacks, uh, you know, to know that those areas he's going to have to reset his feet, and you're just going to have to figure out how you want to teach that and how you want that to look. I'm not saying teach it the way I teach it. You know, that just sort of worked for us and made sense. I think that sound. But anyway, that's kind of how we came up with that. But I think if you can do those two things, you can complete it. So here's the compliment. Here's the why. Here's the, you know, here's the now screen. Everybody, again, everybody in America does it. Again, the, the inside receiver is going to block one. R is going to block two defender, right? I mean, you know, it doesn't matter what level it is. You can block it again. However you block it, you can run block it. You can pass block it. You can aggressive block it. I mean, you know. So here's what we do. R screen, R for us. We're going to go two, two yards downfield, plant, come back at a 45-degree angle. So watch that. Watch, watch this. I think, again, these are seven, this is seven graders.
He came in slightly at a 45 degree angle, and here we go. Again. Awesome, Coach. Simple is not sexy, but I mean, I think those are those are things that any youth, middle, JV, you know, all those things that you say that that are high percentage that need to be done, that that are there for the defense, and that stretches you horizontally. That typically give, you know, again, youth, middle school, JVs, freshmen, defensive problems. You know, the perimeter. Right. I mean, the, you know, you, you know, out, out outside the box. If you can get outside the box, you you know, you don't have to throw it downfield. Not really. You got to get outside. I think those are ways to get easily outside. And when you do, then that does open up your other stuff. And if you're able to throw it and do some of those things, I mean, may, I mean, it gets fun. As you know, it, it, it just gets fun then because they can't, they can't stop you. And you've incorporated the player and some of those other things in those routes. Um, and, you know, in the quick game routes, you know, we've got a – in one of our quick game routes – Let's let's uh, let's let's stop it there because right. we're getting long on our video. But Mike, I, I'm so glad I had you on here because you did exactly <laughs> what I wanted you to do. Is you know just that that mindset transition that you you went through, just the ability to give some some guys some some easy high completion passes that are going to get results to just gain the confidence. You know, half of it's just the coach getting confident with throwing the football. But I, I'm just – I've become a true believer in this idea that the rec league guys and the middle school guys, when they start throwing the football, the numbers are going to come out, just like you said happened for your middle school, where you get Absolutely. the numbers out when you start throwing the ball. And, and kids like to go on – you know, watch TV on Saturday and Sunday and see their offense getting getting played out there. I think that's the difference maker. So, Mike, thank you so much. And uh, and uh, I, I'm going to have you back to teach more of the quick game because uh, <laughs> you, you helped a lot of people today, and I really appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Been an honor. Thank you, Coach.